Hi, I'm Tony Knight with Knight Muzzle Loading, and you're watching USA Outback. Outback is brought to you by Shot is Shoe and Clothing Barn. We're all your hunting needs. Walker's Game Ear, here like you've never heard before. Code Blue, from one deer to one bottle. Glenn Lindemann's Buckwing Products, quality gear, successful hunts. Brunton, get out there. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. And Whitetail Hunting Strategies. Closed captioning is brought to you by Walker's Game Ear. Welcome to this week's show. Hi, I'm your host, Denny Snyder, and you're watching USA Outback. This week we've traveled up to Sullivan County, Pennsylvania for the early muzzleloader season. This will be the first year that we've been able to hunt with inline muzzleloaders here in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm hunting with a night muzzleloader rifle. I just shot a, a nice, healthy doe, which we're going to be donating to the Hunter Sharing the Harvest Program, which you're going to hear all about this week with the, the director, John Plowman. And uh, we have some exciting hunts coming up with some of the other hunters on our party today. But first, a word from these sponsors. For hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear, call us toll free or shop online. Well, folks, it's the first day of the antlerless muzzle loading season here in Pennsylvania. Uh, first year we've been able to use inlines uh, with a scope on also. And I'm hunting with a uh, night. 45 super disc with a 3 to 9 Nikon on it. Nice combination. And it's a sweet little gun to pick up and look through and sight, shoot. Shoots very accurate. Nice thing about this uh, is Gary Alt's new proposal on our deer management program. We're able to use these things to help reduce some of the doe population here. That's the nice thing about it is once the rut kicks in, it's really going to make it interesting for uh, bow hunters especially later on. We'll take some of these old mature does out of here and uh, leave a few less for these bucks to have to run around and try to breed all the time because they can only stay with one doe for like three days until she comes in heat and stuff. And this way they have a better chance of breeding some of the better mature does. So I think it's a heck of a, a good idea that Mr. Alt's come up with and I think uh, Pennsylvania hunters can make history here today and help our deer herd end up making good mature bucks here in Pennsylvania. We have the potential, it just takes a little time, a little genetics. It was early morning on the opening day of the first all muzzleloader antlerless deer season held in the state of Pennsylvania. I was hunting with Hunter Sharing the Harvest Director John Plowman in Sullivan County. And we were hoping that by laying a scent trail of code blue deer scent, we would entice one of the numerous whitetails in the area to within range of our night inline muzzleloaders. Even though it's pretty damp out here, it beats January. And you got the fall colors and all the activity of the other wildlife as it forages in anticipation of heavy duty uh, winter weather. And we got our porter roof up here too, thanks to our beloved friend, Glenn Lindemann. This porter roof, this one happens to be in mossy oak, forest floor camo pattern, is a lifesaver. And frankly, I don't know how you can go in the woods if you're going to sit a while, either turkey hunting or archery hunting or hunting with black powder without this because it bails you out if you get caught out in the middle of nowhere and way back in like we were today. We're way back in. We have this thing and it's pouring down rain because this storm was not to come this fast and it did. But under other circumstances, this porter roof works as a great quickie blind if you get caught and you you need to get down in the ground it can serve as a, an emergency ground blind and it does give you some advantage and it perfectly matches the forest floor which is the name of the camo from mossy oak
Guest hunter Robbie Rahm made a great shot on his doe with his night inline muzzle loader. Meanwhile, John Plowman and I sat waiting for our opportunity to come. But this is typical October, but the fact we're having a deer hunt in October with guns, not just archery equipment, is significant. And the fact that hunting opportunities finally got expanded with the approval of the early all black powder season for antler deer in Pennsylvania is another plus for the hunter. He won that round and it's important. He needed to win that. We've got to catch up with the rest of the world and move into the 21st century on innovative public recreation facilities and wildlife management. After an hour of waiting, my game ear picked up the sound of deer approaching us from the top of the hill. As fortune would have it, the deer were on my side of the tree and not John's. Yes, this cameraman was also carrying a night in line. After my shot, John did get a chance at taking the second deer from an awkward position. Let's watch the results. Where is it? It's laying up here, John. I shot my deer. Oh, there was two? Yeah. Mine's down. Okay. Mine's missed. Well, let's go up and get it then. I'm not going to reload this. We got what we came for. John, we were in the right spot, buddy. Those deer came right down to us. You had the road covered, and they just happened to come down my trail. I'm sorry, buddy, but well, my deer stuck to the script. I know. <laughs> It happens, but it, it's sort of nice to be out here. The fact we could actually hunt deer in October with inline muzzle loaders in this beautiful setting of Sullivan County with the fall colors and so forth, and the fact that uh, we're one-on-one -on -one with the wildlife, and that's what really counts as far as I'm concerned. And now we have a deer that we can donate to the food bank program through Hunter Share and the Harvest. And we were actually on the ground here to make sure it's a nice big fat one, well marbled, I might add. <laughs> That food bank will be most grateful for that particular doe laying up there. I think so, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that one deer will provide over 200 meals for the people that will be sharing our harvest. When we come back, we'll talk with Tony Knight, founder of Knight Muzzle Loaders. But first, a word from these sponsors. Some 30 million Americans are needy and hungry, and relief centers often lack adequate protein to provide balanced nutrition. I'm Gerald McCraney, here to encourage every hunter to share nature's bounty. Make some of your harvest a Sportsman Against Hunger contribution to a local relief agency. SCI members pioneered Sportsman Against Hunger more than 12 years ago. This program is a leading source of protein for people in need. Call 800-377-5399 to get involved. Hi, I'm Jim Zumbo. The Game Ear works for me. I'm Bob Walker, president and founder of Walker's Game Ear. The Game Ear works for me. So whether you choose the Game Ear, the Game Ear 2, or the Power Muffs, Walker's Range Ear Power Muffs work for me. Let Walker's product line enhance your hearing and protect yourself from the harmful effects of muzzle blast. Thanks, Walker's Game Ear. Game Ear works for me. Let the Game Ear work for you. Really, I sat down as a gunsmith to come up with what I thought would be the absolute uh, best muzzleloader for mountainous conditions. So my, my first few prototypes uh, I liked, and I finally settled on one, and it was a straight pull action. It was called an inline. In other words, uh, the uh, powder charge is in line with the ignition system. And that was the action that I settled with. And it was a straight pull action. And I wanted to add a degree of safety to it. And I, I have both the thumb safety and the secondary safety, which, of course, gives it two safety. So we were the first to come out with a double safety system. And, of course, it had to be reliable under all weather conditions. And that was the inline action with a special 
breech plug nipple combination. And so really I used three things coming up with the MK-85, reliability, accuracy, and safety. I'm using one of these Knight 45 Super Discs with 150 grain Barnes bullets in them things. Three to nine Nikon on it. I'll tell you what, I've got one heck of a blood trail here. You can't believe. She ran maybe 60 yards max. We could hear her circle and drop down over. Man, this thing, anybody could follow this blood trail. That's a heck of a combination. It just smacked her. You're looking at history being made right here today. It's the uh, early muzzleloader season. First year we've ever been able to use inline rifles, muzzleloaders with scopes. And uh, the Game Commission decided it would be okay for us to practice the management this year with Gary Alt's new deer management program. They uh, improvised these into our season. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. That, uh, taking some of these mature does out of here is really gonna make the rut really interesting when it comes due here pretty soon. Well, John, that night rifle certainly did a number on this deer. They're the best. It might have gone 10 yards at the most. It didn't go very far. It made a very good shot under sort of dim light, but these guns perform as advertised, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll get my tag here and uh, get this one tagged. And Time to tag, time to drag. It was brown and it was down. Get it to the butcher way. shop. We're going to take it to uh, one of our participating processors, Lutzelman's Butcher Shop in Sullivan County. And they will process this deer. And then the food bank in Dushore will take it. I'm going to offer you a pen to use. I know you're very nervous. You don't get deer very often. But this is very exciting for you. Hi, I'm John Plowman with Hunter's Share in the Harvest Program. We're here at the Shepherd of the Hills Church in Dushore, Pennsylvania, which is the distribution point for the Sullivan County Food Pantry. And what we're experiencing here today is the end of the trail for the venison stream that all started back in the woods when the deer hunters were able to bag some deer and share with the truly needy that otherwise would not get that much red meat protein. Hunter's Share in the Harvest has a, a role to play here because we provide the red meat and we're very happy to do that. Sullivan County deer hunters were kind enough to share quite a few of their deer uh, from this past season with these folks. Whether they lived here or they didn't, a lot of them have camps up here, but they li actually live downstate. But they left their deer with uh, our participating butcher who did the deer up at a special rate. And then the food pantry has collected the deer meat at the processor and brought it over here where they're actually distributing it to these folks that are coming to get their monthly allocation. And this is why we do what we do. This is the end of the trail, so to speak. And it's a team effort, whether it's the hunter that donates the deer after he bags it and tags it in the woods, to the volunteers in this church that are handing it out. It takes everybody's effort working together very closely. Because of the hunters for, uh, sharing their meat and hunters sharing the harvest program, our families will be able to get a lot more protein in their bags of food, which uh, they can pick up today. It's a wise use of a wildlife resource. This is the end result of the new deer management in Pennsylvania. If we can remove more antlerless deer out of the population before the breeding season and have it recycled into wonderful products like this for folks that otherwise would be out of the loop, they would not have access to this meat except for hunter sharing the harvest. So this, this serves a multitude of purposes. But we need a distribution point like you folks provide in every county, and it's there. And you're just part of the 21 entity regional food bank system, and we're really glad to work with all of you. Oh, we're thrilled you came. Well, we're glad you contacted us. Yes, we're thrilled you came. Well, last summer talk, started this on this. Just remember, this is, this is the hunter's way of having a compassionate side and remembering that he does a social service too. He isn't just out for himself. Right. This is a pro hunter program for hunters, by hunters, and for folks like you. Now it's time for Making Sense Out of Sense with Don Bell, brought to you by Code Blue. Now folks, this right here, this is a fresh rub. Let me tell you what you have right here. 
all over North America as bucks come into pre-rut, a whitetail buck, various ages, will come into a tree and they'll make what most hunters know is a rub. What you have right here is what we call a rub line. And I don't know if you can tell from here to right in behind me, you have a second rub here. And we're here, and in fact, I can look here and see these rubs lined up all the way down this ridge. These bucks come in and as they hit this, they hit it during pre-rut. And what they're doing is they're creating a boundary, uh, a fence row of where they're gonna live during the rut. A great strategy to be able to use this is not just to know where the deer are hitting and where the boundaries are, but they also, you can come into this and you can make it hotter. Now this is pre-rut, whether you're in the north or where you're in the south, this activity is gonna happen. One of the things you can do with this is to take you some buck urine. Now you don't wanna put estrus on this, you wanna put buck urine. This is where the buck is running and he's trailing and he's wanting to see he's becoming more territorial. So as he does this rub line through here, he's building him a wall for his house. So you take buck urine and what you do with this, you take it and if you'll notice, you can do it with liquid, but this is a gel. It won't evaporate, it doesn't wash away as quick, and hey, it won't readily freeze even though you don't need it this time of the year in early fall. As you put this on, you are painting this scent on. And I want you to notice something I'm doing here. I'm painting a wider surface. And when that old buck comes by here and he smells another buck that's been in his area, hey, it's called a territorial infringement. And even though during pre-rut they're not really fired up mad, they're going to come see who it is to see who the new kid on the block is. Hey, folks, this year, work on this strategy. You'll have success. And I'm Don Bell with Code Blue. Secrets of the Pros is brought to you by Walker's Game here. Hi, I'm Michael Hanback, and I'm here with your big buck tip of the week. When I'm out scouting for whitetails, this is number one what I'm looking for. Good size rub, at least as big as my arm. A lot of times a central signpost like this, be this big, big as your thigh. The bigger the better, because in my opinion, only a really truly big mature buck is going to tackle a tree like this. You can look at a rub like this and see the intensity with what the buck rubbed it with. He's got to be mature, he's got to have a good size rack, more than that he's got to be heavy body with a strong muscular neck to rip a tree like that. You can see this one's pretty fresh. What a central signpost like this tells me, more importantly, not a whole lot if I find one. But if I find three or four in an area, I think I've located a big buck's core area. Now what that means to me, a lot of people think a big buck will roam all over the woods, but if you can come in and find several good sized signpost rubs like that, you've narrowed that buck down. You've found a good portion of his core area. Now, that might be a place where he feels comfortable, he's got escape zone, he's got bedding area, he's got feed close by, and he's got access to does during the rut. Come in, find a central signpost like this, narrow down a buck's range, scout out from there, look for fresh rubs, trails, scrapes, feeding areas, bedding areas, you've got a good chance to kill a mature buck. I'm Michael Hanback and we'll see you next time. In the food bags we put um, spaghetti and spaghetti sauce, uh, cereal, um, bread, eggs. Uh, this is the most important part of the, of the food bag. This is the protein, the meat that comes. Normally we can only give a family of three or four one pound of meat, which is all that usually goes into this bag. Because of hunters sharing the harvest, we can uh, give these people two pounds or two packs, which is two and a half pounds of meat for the next two weeks so that they'll have extra meat, uh, extra protein for their families um, for the next two weeks. We can use your help. It's deer season now, but even off season. If you have deer meat in your freezer and you want to share it after the season and after the fact and after you've had enough for yourselves, remember. Our area coordinators and our food pantries around Pennsylvania can still use that deer meat. We can also use your financial donations to help pay our butcher bills that have worked so well around Pennsylvania to process this deer meat and get it to the regional food bank system. Please call me at 717-243-9024 or email sharedeer, one word, at AOL.com. Make contact with us and we can certainly appreciate your help. Remember, donations are tax deductible to the program. Hunter Share and the Harvest is a 501c3 organization working in concert with 41 sponsors and state agencies to make this system work.
During the 2001 muzzleloader season, I was hunting in the special regulations area of Delaware County, Pennsylvania, with a flintlock in a prime location for whitetails on private property. Delaware County is known for an abundance of whitetails, and as a result, also has one of the highest rates in the country for reported cases of Lyme's disease. Primitive hunting, the use of bows and muzzleloaders, is one means of controlling the deer herd. Here's an example of one flintlock misfire, a flash in the pan, and just a plain miss at close range by yours truly. Evidently, when I had gotten into my tree stand, all of the powder had come out of the pan, something I had forgotten to check. The group of deer had followed the scent trail of code blue I had put down when walking in and continued to scent check the area as I fumbled to get more powder in the pan. When hunting with a muzzleloader, you normally get only one shot. I'm certain that because of my scent trail, it captured their interest long enough to afford me a second shot. Being new to muzzle loading, I had filled the pan, but did not have enough powder from the pan into the charge in the muzzle, resulting in the age-old adage of a flash in the pan. Surprisingly, even after two attempts, one deer still remained well within range. The large doe couldn't figure out where all of the strange noises were coming from. Good camo and careful scent elimination helped conceal me within the forest canopy, giving me the advantage and an opportunity for even a third shot. The third shot was a clean miss in strike three, a perfect example of the difficulty of hunting with a muzzleloader. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's show on hunters sharing the harvest. And always remember, it doesn't matter whether you're hunting or fishing, your actions represent millions of other sportsmen out there with what you do. So always be an ethical sportsman. We'll see you next week right here on USA Outback. For more information about USA Outback, give us a call at 